MacBook Pro. It's nice and cold. Ooh, it's cold. I finally got the new 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And boy, did Apple toy with my emotions in sending me this one. It left China last weekend, and UPS showed delivery for November 1st. And then it got stuck in South Korea and delivery changed to November 2nd. Then it gets to Alaska and takes a while there. Delivery changes again to November 3rd. It gets to Kentucky and then finally to Omaha. And sure enough, on the 3rd, I get the computer. Of course, right before I have to leave to pick up a friend at the airport. So the MacBook is at home just calling to me to get it set up and start running tests on Final Cut Pro. And boy, did I test this beauty. More on that later. So stick around to see how badly this little laptop kicks my Mac Pro's ass at exporting my YouTube videos. Also, if you're not subscribed and you love content about tech, Final Cut Pro, Apple, hit the subscribe button below and the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And maybe like this vid too. That'll help get this in front of other viewers who might want to see how these new notebooks stack up against a Mac Pro, an older Mac Pro, a 2013 Mac Pro. So I got the MacBook Pro all set up. I connected my 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro directly to the new MacBook Pro using a Thunderbolt cable and a Thunderbolt 2 to 3 adapter. This allowed me to use Migration Assistant to transfer my user data, preferences, and applications, and it was all surprisingly quick. Once all that was done, I did some work to get Final Cut Pro up and running, namely getting all of my plugins from my Mac Pro transferred to the Motion Templates folder on the new MacBook Pro. I did have to do some reinstallations of plugins. I had to launch Motion to clear out the what's new in Motion menu so some of my plugins would work. Not sure when Apple's going to fix that fun little bug, but hopefully sometime soon. Now this notebook really reminds me of the very first Mac I personally owned, going way back to 2008 and my iBook G3, which was used at the time I acquired it. These new MacBook Pros have a more square aspect ratio on the screen, and the smaller form factor compared to my 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro is what kind of reminds me of those iBook G3s. Now, the reason I went with the 14-inch was partially because of cost, but more so because it's not going to be my daily driver like my 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro was until, of course, I bought my 2013 Mac Pro in 2018. I'll be using this computer primarily for productivity and administrative stuff when I'm not in my studio. I do plan to use it for editing my videos when I'm traveling, when I want to get out of the studio and work at maybe a coffee shop, and of course, I'll be using it to export my YouTube vids. That's right, I'm going to edit on my Mac Pro and then copy my Final Cut library to the MacBook Pro to do the final exports of my vids. So why? Why am I going to go to these links? Because holy crap, this MacBook Pro is fast. So let's talk numbers. I put my 2013 Mac Pro, which has the quad-core Intel processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the dual D300 graphics cards up against my brand new 14-inch MacBook Pro, which has the base M1 Pro chip and 32 gigabytes of unified memory. And I'll admit, at first, I was a little worried about how well the MacBook Pro would handle the XF AVC footage from my C300 Mark II. So I set up two projects, one that was my latest YouTube video about what's going on with Final Cut Pro. I'll link that above and in the description below, so definitely check it out. This vid clocks in at about 11 minutes, and the A-roll is a multi-cam clip with the wide version of my main shot, and then a second angle with a slightly cropped-in version so I can cut back and forth between them. Now I've got color correction applied to the multi-cam, some titles, there's animations, H.264 clips of the Apple event, some animated photos. I didn't render anything in the timeline, so I have background rendering turned off. Now I shoot my vids in 10-bit 422 4K DCI and export using the YouTube and Facebook preset built into Final Cut Pro. I have that set to better quality versus faster encode. So export time on my 2013 Mac Pro in Final Cut Pro 10.6 was a whopping three hours and 10 minutes for that 11 minute video. And if you've been subscribed to this channel or follow me on social, you know I have talked about these painfully long export times a lot. It's been a huge pain point for me in my workflow, and I've been waiting for the new MacBook Pros to help take that pain away. So how fast was the 14-inch MacBook Pro at exporting the exact same timeline I exported on the Mac Pro? Holy crap, this thing is fast. It took just 35 minutes to export what took my Mac Pro three hours and 10 minutes to export, which I'll admit still kind of feels like a long time. So I'm interrupting your programming to bring you a very important announcement. I have made a pretty astounding discovery with this 14 inch MacBook Pro. So while I was setting up for this thumbnail, I decided to export the video that you're all watching on this 14 inch MacBook Pro 
because I was done with all of my fine tuning on this 2013 Mac Pro. I had the 14 inch MacBook Pro plugged into power and when I exported it, I decided just for the heck of it to do another speed test. So I'm expecting this export to take around 35 minutes like it did before, actually a little bit longer because the video's about 15 minutes long. So when it hits around the 30 minute mark, I go over to the laptop to check on the export and lo and behold, it's done. And I kind of scratch my head and I'm like, how did this export faster than 35 minutes when my initial test took 35 minutes to export in the 11 minute video, not a 15 minute video. So I decide to set up the export again and lo and behold, it exports in 15 minutes and 55 seconds. Now this is a nearly 15 minute long video and it's exporting essentially in real time. And then I realize because it's plugged into power, it's exporting faster. When the laptop wasn't plugged into power and I was exporting a video from Final Cut Pro, I'm guessing that the computer does something to manage battery life by reducing the amount of resources it allocates to an export in Final Cut Pro. Now this to me is unbelievable. A video that would have taken well over three and a half hours to export on this trash can is taking about 15, 16 minutes on this computer. What? an unbelievable machine. And I cannot believe that once I insert this into the video and export it again, I'm only gonna have to wait maybe 16 or 17 minutes for it to export. That's incredible. So as you watch my additional test results, keep in mind that this laptop was running off the battery. So those export speeds may increase with it plugged into power. Well, let's get back to the video. So what does this mean for my content creation? Well, it means when I spot a small mistake in my edit, I can re-export in a reasonable amount of time and still get the video up on YouTube before the end of the workday. In the past, a large mistake that I knew I had to fix might mean that I post the video the next day because it's going to take over three hours to export. And that can be really emotionally taxing as a creator because I really get my heart set on getting a video out to all of you on a Tuesday but having to re-export pushes it to the following day. Maybe it's not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but it bothers me when fixing something has such significant consequences. So a few other numbers. I exported one minute of a roll of me shot on my C300 Mark II with a basic grade applied and nothing else. It took 12 minutes and four seconds on my Mac Pro to export. The same timeline on the new MacBook Pro took one minute and 16 seconds. I also did the same thing with 4K H.264 MP4 footage from my EOS R, and one minute of A-roll took 13 minutes and nine seconds on my Mac Pro, but only one minute, seven seconds on my MacBook Pro. So these are huge performance increases. So just for fun, I also ran the one minute timeline test on my 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro, which was the fully loaded version when I bought it. So a 2.7 gigahertz quad core Intel i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the one gigabyte Nvidia GeForce GT 650M dedicated graphics card. This computer is maxed out using macOS Catalina and it's running Final Cut Pro 10.5.4 instead of 10.6. So one minute of XF ABC footage took 15 minutes, 18 seconds on my 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro, which stacked up against a 2013 quad core Mac Pro it's pretty damn good for a laptop, but it is the maxed out 15 inch MacBook Pro from 2013 against the base model Mac Pro. Maybe three minutes difference between export times is to be expected. I didn't run the export times with my 4K H.264 footage because I think we get the idea. Now on the 2013 MacBook Pro, the fans were running at full blast and the CPU temp was up around 215 degrees Fahrenheit. On the new MacBook Pro, the fans didn't spin up at all during any of my export tests. The case did get a little warm top and bottom, but that's really it. But here's the crazy crazy thing. I did all of those tests on the new 14 inch MacBook Pro running on the battery. I started the computer on the 3rd of November and today is the 5th and I just now had to plug it in to start charging when it reached about 15%. So I was running all those export tests, using it for productivity, writing the script for this video, and I didn't have to plug into battery power. On the 15 inch MacBook Pro, which is to be expected, it's an eight year old laptop. I have to keep the computer plugged in pretty much at all times because the minute I edit a photo, do anything with Final Cut Pro, the battery, you can just watch it visibly drain. So I'm really excited about the battery life on this MacBook Pro and being able to actually edit video without having battery or charger anxiety. I can run this for a while doing video editing off the battery and not have to be constantly worried about finding an outlet, where's my charger, or keeping it plugged in. And that's huge. So am I glad I dropped $2,600 on this new laptop? You bet your ass I am. This is going to help me get my videos out much faster. 35 minutes versus three hours is a huge difference. 
and I think I'm going to really enjoy knowing that I can do some mobile editing with it as well. This will also help my photo editing. Right now, my MacBook Pro's fans spin up every time I touch a raw photo from my EOS R. I'm hoping to see much more responsiveness from the Photos app, especially when I'm doing large exports of photos for my thumbnails or for when I want to send some photos off to be printed. I'm also hoping to use the new laptop on set for transferring my footage even faster. I do on occasion book gigs where I handle data management and I know this MacBook Pro can really rip when it comes to capturing and backing up footage. Now I love the space gray color. I love the Pro Display XDR. I'm really blown away by the battery life so far. Like I said, the new keyboard feels great. And this is the first time I've had Touch ID on a laptop and wow, is that convenient. So that's it. The new 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I'm really glad I invested in this notebook because I know it's going to continue to move things forward for me as a filmmaker and a content creator. I can't wait for the M1 Mac Pros to roll out. I better start saving for that ASAP if I'm going to replace my 2013 Mac Pro because those are going to be pricey. And of course, I can't thank all of you enough for being a part of my transition away from 2013 and into 2021. We're almost all the way there now that I've upgraded to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the new iPad mini, and the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I'm really thrilled that I can share my growth and my journey with all of you. Your comments, your feedback, your likes and views mean more to me than you know. So thank you for being a part of my channel. Now, one of the best ways you can support the channel, of course, is to click the like button below. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. That's all I've got for now. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Today is the big day. It has finally arrived. We'll cover that up so you rascals don't see it, even though with new object tracking, I can easily block it out. So this is my new 14 inch MacBook Pro, and it's time to unbox it. That's locked. Everything's locked. You can't, can you see? Okay, yeah, you can see. All right, here we go. Oh, cool. over here. All right, new MacBook Pro. 14 inch space gray M1 Pro MacBook Pro. All right, let's tear this sucker open. Oh, okay. And then this just pops off. Make sure we're in here. Ooh. This lifts it up, so easy, so amazing. It's nice and cold. Ooh, it's cold. And here we go. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Got MacBook Pro etched, perfect pentalobe screws, rubber feet, a nice more square design. My desk isn't very even. Never did that before. Now I have a 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro. It is the fully loaded processor, the fully loaded RAM, which is 16 gigabytes of RAM, but then just the base model hard drive. Back then 256 gigs was pretty good to go on, uh, especially because I was editing off of externals. With this one, I've upgraded to one terabyte, although I have some regrets. I think I should have gotten a two terabyte drive. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this paper off. Wow. Very cool. Now I'm not gonna go through the process of setting this up right now. What I'm actually gonna do is use my older laptop to transfer the user information to this laptop. So I want a fresh start, but I want that user data plopped on. Things like email, passwords, iCloud information. I don't wanna set all that stuff up manually, as well as transferring applications. I think that's the best way to go. And uh, so far, I am pretty stoked about this new laptop. Man, this laptop is sweet. You know what the worst part is? The minute you open it, you start gunking it up. Fingerprints on the case, touching the keyboards, they go from that perfect matte black finish to having that little bit of oil from your fingertips. And then of course, the thing I hate most about these notebooks, and it's really nothing Apple can do, but when you close them, the oil that's on the keyboard transfers to the screen and it can really deteriorate the protective coating over time. That's what's happened on my 2015 MacBook Pro, and it's kind of a bummer to be honest. 
but I'm really digging the 14 inch form factor. I think that this is going to be, man, that's a lot of oil on those keyboards. I think this is really going to be a, uh, a workhorse for me. You guys know that's my favorite word. Uh, a workhorse for me uh, as I look to travel more and work remotely a little bit more and get these YouTube videos cranked out even faster. I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to export something in 35 minutes versus three hours and 10 minutes. What a huge improvement. Don't drop it. Ooh. And look, it looks so nice in the lighting. Oh, oh dark. Oh. Ah, new gear. Eight years. It'll be eight. It would. It would be. 2037. Eight. Yeah, it'll be nine years in July since I bought my last MacBook Pro. This really is only the second MacBook Pro I've purchased new. Two of them were used: the iBook G3 and the 17-inch MacBook Pro. I like the little etched text. Oh man, so cool. I'm gonna love shooting B-roll for this. All right, that's it. See ya.